Hi everybody and welcome back to my painting channel. Today is going to be a little exercise in how I paint green uh, and the colors that I use to create greens and you hear me talk about thalocyanin green being a real big animal um, and let loose it's dangerous and it is there's no two ways about that but keep it under control and it's your friend. Um, so let me just go ahead and just play around with a few examples uh, of what I use for my greens and uh, hopefully it's it's going to be a little bit useful to you. So let's dive straight in. All right. Okay, the first green that I would use, obviously, let's just play around with this and it is thalocyanin green and on its own it is a beastie. I've said this many, many times and I will keep saying that and let's just put some white to that and you can see how treating it in this way you know it's it just a little bit just will keep going everywhere all right so that's untempered that is leaving it as it is to its own devices and hopefully you're going to get a result but you're not going to get a result not just on its own you do need to put other stuff with it so let's just look at adding something to it let's just add a yellow to this and let's just put this um well let's just put it down there let's just take some variants of this so there is the yellow cadmium yellow and let's put some cadmium lemon right next to it that's a little bit contaminated that yellow it's got a little bit of red and, and dirt in it from my other painting let's put a little bit of red there okay cleaning my brush out as best i can and while we're at it, let's just put a bit of blue this side, a little bit of cobalt blue. Now let's go in with some of this green. Let's first mix it with this red and let's just see how that alters the green's properties very quickly. Now you've got a warm shadowy green, which you can use quite easily. Clean that out. And let's go in with some more and let's just come into the yellow and how that changes let's put a bit more of the yellow to it and it changes the properties of the green again and you get quite a nice um, fresh green should I say but it all the time it's way off of this one so one so far we've got two nice greens we've got one awful green Okay, let's go in again and let's put that with the lemon yellow. Now, this is going to be the most, uh, what I would tend to suggest, unnatural color green. Because of the properties of lemon, uh, you can see how it changes. The two yellows will alter that green in very different ways. And let's just go into the blue. And from that point of view, the blue will make a very cold green. Now from this you can make so many more greens. Um, I'm just sort of scraping the top of the iceberg really. But by having just the one green on your palette of course, you can go so many places with it. Now I know we've got the traditional blues. We can go with cobalt blue. Let's make a couple of piles of cobalt. In fact let's make four piles of cobalt just for the sake of it, because we can. And while we're on that, let us um, put four piles of ultramarine blue. And I'm sure you can, you're can. you aware what's coming up. But let's just put this out anyway. Another dab right there, and another dab right there. Okay. So to this end, we're going to put in other yellows. We're going to put in some of the um, yellow that we had, which is cadmium yellow deep, and that makes a very acidic green. Now these are uh, with cobalt. Go in again with lemon on this one. And you can see again how the lemon affects that blue quite dramatically and you've got 
two yellows but the same blue but very very different strengths and you can make this even more so you can change that green and lighten it more now what I haven't done in any of these colors so far is introduced any whites there's no need to um, you can uh, lighten them up with the yellows uh, and should you need to put white into them to cool them off more because that's what white will do white is a cooling color it will always make a color cooler than it already is so be aware of that and um, sometimes it's nice to use yellows or lighter colors to suggest the lightness in a color let's just um i actually wanted to use a different color of uh, some of the ochres which i don't normally use on my palette so they're not readily to hand but let's just carry on. Let's use the same two colors into the ultramarine blue. And because this has got a lot of red in, this color blue or green will be quite heavily affected by um, the addition of the yellow because you've got red in ultramarine, which is not present in the cobalt. So again, you've got a different yellow altogether. Let's come back in with the uh, cad yellow deep and once more we're going to end up with a very different green again there we are so all these different greens that we're making and these are just a few you can make so many but all these different greens have different qualities of warm and cool and light and dark so that your foliage or your grasses or whatever you're trying to render in oils will have an effect depending on which of the other colors you add to the blues or that phthalo green on your palette. But it does mean to say you do not need to have too much in by way of greens. You don't need all this plethora of greens out there on the market. Just one or two colors one green on your palette is all you need with your two blues and you've got a, an a infinite array of green colors so let's just do one more thing this is something that i use a lot of in my landscapes and i it's the only reason that i carry black and you wonder why everyone says you shouldn't use black well some people do i know one or two artists that literally put a tap of black on their palette and they judge all their values from that they don't actually use it in the painting but they use it to judge but i do use it in paintings in landscapes quite a bit and this is for why because on its own black sucks in light it's no good it just kills color now what i do is i use a blue black blue black can be made up of um ivory black and ultramarine blue that's all it is the reason that i buy a tube and it's the only non michael harding paint that i carry and it's this one which is blue black from windsor and newton and the reason i use that ready made is because i know the blue black consistency will be the same every time i tip, put my brush into it and need to use it I could quite happily put some ivory black down and some ultramarine blue from uh, Michael Harding and I can mix my own blue accordingly or my own blue black accordingly but this way I get the same consistency from a proprietary brand each and every time I go to use it. What do I use with it? Well this is what I use with it. Lemon yellow. Let's just put the two together like so and let's just start to blend them now you can see from this quite easily i think how the black blended with the yellow gives a beautiful array of subtle distant greens because of the blueness in that black it just gives another dimension. I do like this. Now, any one of those areas here can be used in as distance greens in hills, especially around sort of from there to about there. 
fantastic to put in um, hillsides and what have you to um, give that far away look, that aerial perspective that you could be looking for. So that's the only other combination that I put on my palette. Uh, and if you do see me painting and I've got blue black on my palette, you know why I'm using it. And, and for no other reason, um, just for that one. That's the only time I put it out there. And uh, yeah, so what I'm saying about this just uh, quickly winding up is that this on its own is a beastie. Um, don't let it loose unless you're quite sure you're going to uh, keep it under control. And the way you keep it under control is to use that with so many other values of color on your palette. You do not need to keep just using the Thalo Blue. It's extremely aggressive color to, to let loose, as I say. Don't want to keep harping on about that, but be aware of it. And in that regard, you can use it with almost every other color on your palette. Well, you can. There's no reason why I can't use it with any color. You can actually use it with umbers, uh, siennas, your yellows, everything. And it will change the color and the values and the chroma of each and every one. And of course, if you start mixing white with any of these, you end up with a cooler version of whatever it is you started using. So enough said. Those are my greens on my palette. Those are the ones that I tend to mix. And I hope that you've got something from this little video. And if you have, then please hit that like button and share it with your friends who might uh, be interested in knowing a little bit more about uh, certainly these combinations of greens and the way that I use them. And um, yeah, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel, please. That's fantastic. I'd appreciate that very, very much. And if you want to see a lot more content on my channel, pop over to my Patreon page. All the details are below this video for you to see. Click on that and go and have a look at the Patreon and just see what's on offer. There is a, a growing number of videos. I'm adding to them all the time. And so if you want to see some real-time, full-blown, fully narrated uh, videos of, of some of my paintings in oil and in watercolor, join the club. Get involved. And um, yeah, I'd love to have you on board and welcome you. And uh, just take a look. It costs you nothing to see. Anyway, in the meantime, subscribe, like, share, and I'll catch you all soon on the next video. All the very best to you. Bye-bye.